And the BBC's Lise Doucette joins us now from Kyiv. Uh, Lise, hello to you again. Just tell us a little bit more about what you have been hearing and seeing today where you are and, and describe how uh, far away you are from this area to the north of the capital, uh, Obolon, where we understand Russian armoured vehicles have entered a residential district. That area is just about uh, less than 10 kilometers north of where we are in the center of Kiev, and they are advancing. We are hearing reports of explosions here in the city center, and that is why almost every hour there's been the emergency siren sounding, people taking to the bomb shelters. In fact, this is a city which has largely gone underground, especially in the city centre. It's very, very eerie. Most of the streets are empty. People are taking shelter in parking lots, in metro stations, in whatever room they have, if they have a room where they're living. I spoke to someone this morning who was basically taking shelter under a kindergarten. They know that Russian forces have entered the district of Kiev. They know they're very close uh, to the capital um, and they hear the warnings. They hear the warnings from their own Ukrainian forces and they hear the warnings from the Russians as well. Um, we have heard the appeal from President Zelensky uh, to NATO, to, to other allies, to do more, uh, to go beyond those sanctions they've announced. Clearly, those sanctions will take time to have an impact on Russia and to what extent it will make an, an impact. We simply don't know yet. Um, <clears throat> but there is the immediate crisis which faces Ukrainians. So what more uh, does President Zelensky want from allies right now? Yes, we've had a lot of discussion on BBC News about what impact can sanctions have, what kind of sanctions work. But many of these sanctions take weeks, if not months, to really bite. And the concern is that the urgency is now. There was a whole wave of sanctions announced yesterday in one European capital after another. Did it make the Ukrainian Russian forces change course? Did it seem to have changed President Putin's mind? It doesn't seem to have had any impact at all. And even though President Zelensky has said from the beginning with some bitterness that when it comes to a war like this, and we really are in the midst of this punishing war, uh, that it will come down to Ukrainians. But it is really, uh, really, really jarring to read the messages on social media and the appeals going out from the Ministry of Defense telling Ukrainians to bring your passport. If you have some combat experience, that's good, but it's not necessary. And come and pick up a gun. They told people in the in the suburbs of Kiev that if Russians come to your area, prepare Molotov cocktails. I heard an announce. I saw an announcement this morning saying, if you know anything about hacking, join our underground so you can take on the Russian hackers. So Ukrainians feel very much alone while they're still grateful for whatever help they had. So they're either going underground here or many that I met uh, today either said I've sent my family away or people are already leaving. And that includes our, our colleague of ours from the BBC's uh, at the head of the BBC Ukrainian service, Marta Shokalo, who joins us now. Marta, we're really sorry that you had to leave with your family. Just. And you had done a report for the BBC saying that nowhere seemed safe anymore. Have you found a safe place? Well, at least I hope it's safe for some time. Um, it's really hard. I was taking the decision in the middle of the night when I saw the news about tanks, Russian tanks going to Kiev. And I thought at that moment that this is a time to move on and to go somewhere. I was really um, deciding which direction should I go. Should I go west to uh, to Lviv and then maybe to Poland, or should I go somewhere where I can stay and I know where? Uh, so that's east, uh, which is closer to Russia, obviously. And uh, I thought that I did I wouldn't have enough my petrol in my car to drive to Lviv because the traffic is in enormous you 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 drive at least for 20 hours or more so and there is no chance you can get a uh, fuel on the road so i decided to go the easiest way to go to the village where my uh, parents in laws live it's eastern direction it's uh, closer to russia than uh, kiev but still it's a small village and uh, i hope it will stay uh, 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 it will stay quiet here for some time at least or forever 
And how hard was it to, to leave Kiev? We've heard reports that some of the roads are gridlocked because so many people are trying to leave. You know, it was, I can't say it was hard. It was kind of surreal because I was lying in my bed at three o'clock in the night, uh, close to my son who, who could hardly sleep uh, because of the nervousness and tension and uh, sounds of uh, blasts. So I, I thought uh, this is the time I need to make decision and I need to make it fast. So I made the decision. It took me about an hour uh, to get all my things together, mine and his. And uh, I just uh, we just decided to leave it about uh, straight after the curfew was um, um, lifted. So we waited until maybe 7.30 and then went straight into the car and drive um, through the Kia. We were really worried that maybe uh, there could be some blocks on the roads, on the bridges across the river, but uh, it was really, um, and it was quite empty. So we drew quite fast and uh, it, it felt really surreal because I was leaving my home. Usually I go there when I go for holidays. And it's always happy time. I'm going to, to the village and it's nice and I'm happy. I'm looking forward. But this time it was different um, feeling because I really didn't know if I go there when I will see my home again and if I see it at all. So, but I was trying not to think about that. I was really focused on the road. I was driving through this amazing spring, uh, sunny morning and uh, I was, I, I can't say I was happy, but I was, yeah, I was happy in a way that I'm, I'm doing something and I'm um, moving somewhere. And uh, the road was almost empty, and uh, towards Kiev it was completely empty. We only saw tanks and uh, uh, military vehicles moving towards Kiev. Marta, stay safe and. I know you'll be talking to your Ukrainian service colleagues as well. All of them feel this pressure of not just covering a story, but covering their own story and their families. So I hope you and your, your children, the rest of your families stay safe. And thank you for all of your reporting. And this is what it's like for Ukrainians to live in this war. Hard decisions about whether to stay and if you go, where do you go? And so many Ukrainians are beginning to say they fear there's nowhere to hide.